Now we're in the projects dashboard, which is where I spend most of my time. You'll be able to see all of your projects in a list right here. These sections, leads, jobs, combined, and archived are automatically loaded, but if you want to customize that, you can click customize. These are known as status indicators. In my standard account, I have leads, I then have followed up once, followed up twice, dead since survey, even older, I have current leads, past leads, and I even had a section that I created for COVID-19 leads because that was a little confusing calendar wise. Um, so as you can see, the more jobs you get, the more statuses you might want to create. You could create statuses for, um, you know, sign the contract or a design phase if you're an invitation designer like me or whatever works for your business. I like to have a pretty high level overview. Um, and then you can actually um, edit the view of all the different things that you're seeing on each project in the drop down, And you can also select um, which status indicator you want to open the projects dashboard on. So I always want to open it on my active jobs, not my leads. You can change that if you want. When you have a lot of different jobs, you can use the filter in a lot of different ways here, or you can always just type in the client's name up here and it will bring up any projects that are associated with that client for you to click on. If you click on any jobs like here for test test invitations, you can see all the information for that job. So on the left, you'll have a lot of the client information as well as their portal, their status, any tags that you add to them, um, and also their contract here. Then we'll have invoices, forms, appointments, workflows, tasks, and notes. These are things that we'll talk about in a little bit. And here you will have all of your email communications with them. You can send an email here through Dubsado, and then you can even see when the last time they looked at that email was. It sounds a little creepy, but it's really helpful for understanding if they just haven't read the email, if they didn't receive the email, um, or if it's time for a follow-up. The notes that you take in this portal are only for you. You can move it to um, a call log or just the note section. The activity log is gonna track all the different activities you do. And I'm not saying you should write mean things about the notes, but you don't have to worry about these being formal because the client will not see them. Technically, the client will not see anything that is in this portal until you actively send it to them. In order to create a new project, you'll return to the projects panel and you'll click on new project here. We need to enter a title. So let's say Doug and Patty invitations. We can create a new client here. Let's do Patty mayonnaise and put in her email, patty at killertofu.com. I hope you guys are getting these references and you can put in a lot of information here. These are the only required ones. As you can see with the star, we have a first name and technically an email address is not required, but how can you communicate them <laughs> without one? And then we'll select our project status. So this is a job and it will be in the design status. And then you can create a tag. Some tags that I use on my main account are coaching, Etsy, semi-custom, or website sale. These are just things that I like to keep track of here in Dubsado. Um, so it's nice when I can just add that and then I'll be able to sort reports and projects by those tags. There's a lot of different ways you can use this in your business. And then I'm pretty much always going to add their wedding date in here. Let's select a nice summer wedding date for Doug and Patty, and then you can decide if you're going to be shown as busy or available all day. Um, I usually just leave this because I don't really use the Dove's Auto calendar too much, but if you do, then you can decide if you need your calendar to be marked uh, busy or available all day, or if you just want this event to be at a specific time on that day. Um, if you're going to be at the wedding, for instance, it'd be great that no one else can schedule anything that day. I'm never at the wedding, so for me, it doesn't really matter, and I typically just leave it at uh, busy, but just depends on what you need and you'll click create project. And now we have Doug and Patty's invitation projects with our client Patty Mayonnaise. After you've created this, you can always access the client page by going into the Patty Mayonnaise client and you can change a lot of things here. You can also edit a little bit from this project page. For instance, if there's a wedding planner, I am often gonna add them as an alternative contact so that I can send them information easily as well. All right, so we've created this project for Doug and Patty. It's not that this was a lot of hard work, but what if we could make it even easier? In the next section, I'm gonna teach you how to create a lead capture form so that the clients can actually create this project for you and you don't have to do some of this work yourself.